introduce Elaine Pimentel. She's full professor in mathematics in University of Rio Grande do Norte in Brazil. And she works on proof theory, uh, relation with concurrency theory, ecumenical systems, uh, logical frameworks, linear logic, etc. And I would like also to mention that she was one of the ambassadors of logic at the World Logic Day in 2021. So we are very proud from Elaine. So Elaine, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you so much, Delia, for, uh, for the very kind uh, introduction. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to, to thank the organizers of FSCD and the PC and uh, the steering committee that, you know, for choosing me to give a talk. I'm really, really happy about it. And also to thank Alejandro for, and, and his team for all the work. I mean, it's really impressive. I mean, the amount of work that they have done so far, it's not easy to organize something in this in this difficult time. So, so yeah, so um, my talk is about uh, the formula, processes formula interpretation, and uh, I'm going to give our view of the processes formula. Uh, that would be a substructural multimodal view. Uh, so, uh, so let me start explaining more or less what, what this kind of interpretation is. So we are all more or less uh, used to type this formula kind of view. Uh, and and uh, in the sense that oops. Uh, sorry uh, yeah so sorry there is a typo here so it's session type in the sense that you have uh, and, um, uh, 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 sorry you have lambda calculus on one side simple type lambda calculus on one side. And in the other side, you have uh, you have uh, in, uh, intuitionistic logic, propositional intuitionistic logic, right? So you can see a term in the calculus as a proof in the logic, and you can see computation as normalization. Okay. So for this uh, simple Curry Howard kind of um, view uh, of uh, uh, type of formula, uh, there are many, many, uh, many, many. Um, places where you can go and, and read about this, of course. I mean, it, it, there is an extended uh, um, uh, bibliography on, on the subject. subject. Uh, and I put only one here of uh, the paper that Wadler, uh, it's a kind of survey that uh, with a very particular and interesting view that uh, Philip Wadler gave in 2015. Okay, you can move to you can move to concurrent calculus and linear logic. Now it's uh, it's right here. Uh, again, you have a process as proof, uh, and you uh, here you're, you're going to have communication as scatter elimination. So this was first observed by Abramsky in '93, '94, uh, and then uh, Valeria Di Paiva um, did uh, also this kind of interpretation, uh, but for intuitionistic uh, linear logic, uh, where she has uh, subject reduction and this kind of things. Okay, so uh, you can move on. So more recently, we have a session type as, as, uh, as formulas in linear logic, uh, where you can see the interaction of, uh, of sessions in uh, as cut elimination. Okay, and there are lots of works uh, again in this in this topic. I only put here some references, so this is not going to be really a survey on everything. Just to give you a, a, a glimpse of. Uh, of, of the, the kind of interpretations and the kind of uh, computational systems that you put in one side and the logical system that you put in the other side and how you, you establish this, uh, this relationship between them. Okay, if we move to the other side, so now if you go to a processes formula, so what we're going to see is, um, so this, this the type of formula is really processes terms, right? So um, there's another way of looking at, at um, calculi and logic and relationships between them. You see processes not, not more as terms, but as formulas, okay? So, so I, I'm, again, I'm going to put only one, some words uh, on the subject. So for example, I would like to, to cite um, Paula's work on that where she related CCS with linear logic. Well, not really linear logic, but the, um, uh, to BV, that would be a deep, uh, deep inference uh, system. Um, and again, I mean, you, you're going to have processes formula and what you, you, you really want to see is how the reductions in one side 
correspond to proof set from the other side. Okay. And the other one, the other work I would like to highlight would be the work of Iliano and colleagues. Uh, so first with Tedros and then uh, with uh, uh, some other colleagues uh, that they, they are going to relate again to CS as linear logic, but they are really interested on um, uh, really studying meta level properties about this. So for example, how, how, how can you uh, talk about by simulation and, and the logical side and this kind of thing, right? So you want to reason about uh, the, 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 the calculi that you're specifying. So, um, so um, uh, finally, the, 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 the final uh, work that I wanted to, to, to give a citation in this part of the talk, it'll be the one of uh, Francois Fage and colleagues, where instead of having CCS, uh, they're, they're going to have CCP, uh, and uh, on the other side, again, linear logic, okay? Uh, oh, and, and I forget about, about the pi calculus as well. So it's always the same. You, you have processes in one side and formulas in the other side, and you have reduction of proof sets. Uh, this is the work of uh, our NQ and colleague uh, where they uh, do this, uh, this kind of interpretation as well. Um, CCP, so today I'm going to talk really about CCP and linear logic. So it has to do, so it's based on the top of this work actually. Uh, and, uh, but, but I would like to, I would like to talk a little bit about where this all started. Okay. So this all started with the work of Dale Miller in 93, where he is, uh, he is, so he is the, the, the person who introduced it at the same time as, as Abramsky introduced uh, the type of formula for, for uh, linear logic. Um, they introduced this, uh, processes formula also for, for linear logic. Uh, but um, here he, he, he took the, the, the pi calculus as, as uh, the calculus that he was going to study, okay? So his question, the, the basic question about processes formula is this one. So this is different. So we're not going to use logic to, um, to talk about, to characterize somehow uh, the calculus. It's, it's something, it's, it's similar. I mean, it's, it's related to, it's a related question, but it's, uh, it's from inside out. So can we view a given process calculus as a logic? So this is the question, okay? In this sense, you're going to, to, uh, to, to see the constructors of the calculi, of the process calculi as connective of the logic. So this is the, the thing. You're going really to see the, the calculus that you have as a, a logical system, okay? So you're going to translate these things uh, step by step, one by one. So in this way, constructors go, go to connective and the computation go to proof search, okay? So once you do that, so the, 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 the goal of doing these things is to be able to reason about this process of specification using proof theory, okay? Um, so our work is based uh, on this work of uh, Sarge colleagues and, but um, uh, more importantly on the work of Miller, who started this, uh, this subject uh, in, uh, in 93. Um, okay, so uh, as I said, we're going to, to, to be in this branch of the interpretation, uh, uh, interpreting uh, process uh, calculi, and we are going to look only at CCP. So why CCP? Uh, CC, CCP is nice, first, first of all, because it's really simple. So, uh, you can you can see the connections quite right away, so it's it's easy to to see a declarative way of uh, processes using CCP, and the language itself is really simple. So it's really I'm going to show you that in like two slides. So it's really easy to understand. The first steps are really easy to to understand, um, and linear logic on the other side, uh, because exactly because we want to talk about resource conscious um, uh, features of uh, process calculi. So this is the, so this talk is about these two things. Okay, so how we can take CCP and, and, and give it a new look through logic or via logic, embedding one in the other, okay? Uh, what happens is that CCP then uh, on the top of CCP, because it's a really basic language, you can put um, flavors, let's say. So you can talk about epistemic uh, features in CCP and uh, constraint, uh, constraint programming. You can talk about special features or time. You can talk about time units and, uh, uh, on the top of CCP, you can put that. 
or preferences, for example, okay? So we're, what we're going to do is also to see what happens when you go to linear logic. How can you reason about this, all these futures uh, in linear logic as well? So we are going to do that using what is called sub-exponentials, but it's nothing else than multimodalities. And what we're going to see is that arranging this of exponentials or multimodalities in different ways. You have different flavors or different uh, behaviors, let's say, uh, like it's same expression, and et cetera, okay? And so the, 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 the good thing, so there are two good things about this. The first one is that all this is parametric and modular. So it's modular in the sense that you have only one system that would be linear logic with sub exponentials or multimodalities. And what you're going to do is parametrically changing the way you organize these modalities, and then you're going to have interpretation. And the other thing that, that's, um, that should be said about this work is that this is a, very, a really strong and tight relation. So um, sometimes when we talk about interpretation, so even in the process of formula, we embed things in, from one to the other. And this embedding is, you have a way of going, but normally you don't have a way of coming back. It's really complicated because normally in logic, you have more, you, you can do more things uh, than you can do in the calculus. So, mm, so you, you lose a little bit of the connection of what you're doing here, they do not translate on the other side. So what I'm going to show you today is that there is a way of coming back as well. So this is really a tight kind of uh, relation other than uh, being parametric and modular. So this is the, the outline of the talk. So I'm going to show how simple computational behaviors can be captured in logic using simple, simple uh, tools for that. Then uh, we're going to see the other way around. So how different logics can give different computational interpretations. Uh, and then we're going to put modalities on the top of it. So then we're going to be able to talk about time, space, knowledge, for example. And then uh, we can uh, we can wrap everything together and uh, see uh, how we can uh, um, what kind of future di directions we can take for that and uh, what kind of applications we can uh, dream of having uh, from this uh, this work. So all the work I'm going to talk today is joint work uh, with uh, Carlos Alexi and Vivek Nigam. Um, okay, so let's start with linear logic. Okay, so. Um, we're not going to talk about, you know, um, complicated uh, stuff uh, on linear logic. The only thing we have to know about it uh, actually are like three things, I, I think. The first one is that linear logic is, is a logic that re refines both classical logic and indeterministic logic in the sense that from, uh, from classical logic, we maintain the, the spirit of having dualities while from the intuitionistic logic, we maintain the spirit of having uh, a strong constructive uh, interpretation or um, uh, constructive proof. And uh, the other thing we have to, to know is that, you know, uh, once, once you move from linear logic to classical logic and you want to, to keep um, being able to sometimes behave classically, so you, for doing that, you need what it's called in linear logic uh, exponentials, that they are really modalities. So they are unary operators that whenever you see a formula that is, has this uh, operator or this modality with, uh, with it, then it's going to behave classically. It means that you can, uh, you can do weakening contraction, so you can disappear with a formula or duplicate it and this kind of thing, okay? So in this way, you have the classical and intuitionistic logic inside linear logic. So this is the spirit. So these are the two things. And the third thing is that in linear logic, the resources are consumed linearly. What does it mean? It means that if you, if you, you want to, to, uh, to talk about, uh, to specify, for example, coffee machines or, uh, I don't know, state transitions in a general way, uh, you can do that in linear logic. It means that the, the implication in, li in linear, linear logic should be, read, uh, should be read as, as we are going to consume something to produce something. So in this way, if I have a coin and I have a coffee machine, then the process of you know, introducing a coin and having a coffee will be only this. So I have a coin and, and this is a tensor, uh, from coin I have coffee, then I have coffee, okay? So this is really a simple uh, way of explaining how you consume things to produce things. So how linear logic, uh, linear logic implication work. 
Uh, and uh, so let's go now. So this is the logical part. So let's go now to the mm, computational part. So as I said, uh, uh, CCP or con uh, Conference Constraint Programming, it's a really simple, um, um, simple uh, calculus for talking about conference uh, processes. And um, the, 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 I think that the, um, the main feature of uh, CCP is that it has a, a shared store. Okay, so you have uh, processes uh, that can, uh, you have a common store. So you, in the store, you, you have the information and then you can, at any time, you can uh, add some information to the store or you can ask information and then proceed. And of course you have parallelism and you have uh, a notion of uh, locality or uh, scope and, uh, and you have, uh, you have uh, recursion. So you can define uh, processes. Okay, so you have uh, the finest processes. So it's, uh, as I said, it's really simple. So as you have the common store in, uh, for example, uh, your store could be, could have information about temperature and you could tell that the temperature is, mm, is uh, greater than 42. And you can also tell that it's uh, smaller than 70. So this information you can always put in the store. So all information you have, you put in the store. And then you can start, for example, asking information. So for example, this process here is going to ask if the temperature is between zero and, and, and 100, then you can proceed with Q. And so this is the case because the temperature, we know that it's between 42 and 70. So you can always execute this one. But the other one is going to be blocked because you don't know, this information is not enough for you to guarantee that the temperature is 50, okay? So this is the idea of CCP. So in a, as I said, two slides. And then of course you can, you can also reason about coffee machines, for example, or you can specify them. So this is a, a way of specifying a coffee machine, but not uh, quite. I mean, it's a very strange kind of coffee machine where uh, you're going to tell a coin. So you have a coin, so you tell a coin, uh, you have the, the act that the machine does that will be to ask for coin and then tell coffee. And then uh, of course you, you can have a coffee, but in this, uh, in this CCP, as it was um, taught from the beginning, you're also going to have your coin back. If you want a better like coffee machine or at least for, for the vendor, then you're, you need to have a linear kind of uh, CCP where you're going, uh, your ask is going to consume the information that we have in the store. So in this way, you're going to have uh, the same behavior that we had in linear logic, for example, okay? So now you already see that there is a relationship between linear logic and CCP. I mean, it's, going, it's not going to be complicated to establish this, right? So yeah, so, so going in one direction, yes. Yeah. So this is, the, this is the, 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 the point. I mean, that the, going the other way around is, is going to be a little bit complicated. So, for going in the other way around, we are going to do more than have only linear logic. We need to, to be able to tame a little bit proof search, okay? So this is the idea of focusing. So focusing is, um, it, it provides a way of restricting the proof search space. And, uh, and so it's a, it's a discipline that is complete for linear logic. Uh, and the idea is that you, you're going to identify first the, the, the rules that are invertible, so you can apply it no matter what. And then you're going to change together the non-invertible ones in, the, uh, in one, let's say, block that we call the focus block. So the idea of focusing is more or less, more or less like this. So if you have this proof, and this I put in classical linear logic, it's one-sided here, only to be simple. And uh, so you have the three formulas here, and so you decide to start from the uh, the orange one. Uh, so you have a universal quantifier here, and then you move on, and then now you have an existential quantifier. And then, okay, so now I try to do this, so I move on, and then I try to do the other existential quantifier. Then I come back to the blue, and then I go back to the orange, and then I finish this, okay? So, you see the colors, they are all like um, one here and the other one there, and then I start from one and then, so um, it, this is a very non-organized, it's a proof, but it's not non-organized. I can do better. So what's to do better in the setting? So to do better is exactly to um, bring together the colors, right? 
So if I decide to do the, the, the for all here, then uh, I, I'll, I'm going to continue here. And, uh, and then I'll organize this, um, the proof in this way. Okay, so I have the orange here, and then I have here the, the red or organized, and I have here all the blue organized. So it's really a matter of discipline or organ organization of proof. Uh, and then when we do that, now uh, the, the game, what, 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 there, there are lots of games on, on doing that. So one game is that we now can talk about steps uh, and, and, um, uh, and um, derivations in the logic, okay? So we can divide uh, the, the proof into phases uh, that we call synchronous and asynchronous or positive and negative, it depends. Uh, this, so this is, I know that this is an old kind of uh, way of talking uh, about uh, the phases. But uh, in the synchronous phase, uh, you have focus. And when you focus on something, the focus is going to persist until you cannot anymore. Uh, then you, you get to an, a, a synchronous phase, and then you do all the invertible rules. And then at some point, you're going to store uh, some, some formulas. And then you start over again. You focus on something, and then you lose focusing, and then you do whatever in each other. It doesn't matter. Then you store uh, things. And then in this way, you have a, a perfect organization of your proof. Of course, in the synchronous phase, you have to focus on something. So you can, at some point, you can focus on something that you, you should not. I mean, this is not going to lead to a proof. Then you have to backtrack and come back and focus on something else. So. Uh, this is the, the, the synchronous phase or positive phase. You may be, you may have to backtrack. In the other ones, no, you don't have to. Okay. So for us, one focus step is going to be exactly one of this figure that you see now in the screen. Okay. You have one synchronous phase uh, followed by one synchronous phase and some storage. Right, uh, so when we do that, then we can we can have a better uh, sense of steps, so computational steps and focus steps. So this is the catch. So let me first explain how we, we embed and how we see a CCP as a logic, uh, really. So we, we have here processes in CCP. What we were going to do is really to transform them into linear logic formulas. How? So in the way that we should imagine. So for example, S would be transformed into uh, implication and parallelism is going to be captured uh, as the monoidal operator or tensor of linear logic in the, in the way that we would imagine this to happen, right? Uh, right, so, um, and, uh, so in doing this, um, we, we, we have a way of, um, of uh, specifying uh, the processes until we get to this con the constraints, okay? And uh, the constraints have a, a very, you know, a very interesting way of being translated that you move. So we're going to talk about CCP, not linear CCP. So we have to have um, uh, classical behavior, but we can restrict this to the atom, atomic formulas, okay? So this nebula that you see here is only that. So every time we see a constraint that has uh, a particular shape, um, you, you're going to move the, the, the bank or uh, the modality uh, for being classical inside uh, your specification. So in this way, you have a very nice way of specifying, um, specifying CCP into linear logic. And uh, Faz and colleagues, what they, what they proved is that uh, you can observe something in CCP from a process P, if and only if you can prove this something in linear logic from the translation or the encoding or the embedding of this uh, process. As I said at the beginning, this is a very nice result. Uh, and this is the kind of result that process as, as formula seeks or looks for. But it's a weak respondence in the, in the sense that there are things that you do in linear logic that they, they do not have any correspondence in CCP. The other way around doesn't, I mean, the other way around is, is okay. I mean, every step that you do here of computation, it's a step of, of proof, let's say, um, in linear logic. But the other way around is not true, okay? For having this other way around, you need to, to have a discipline of your proof. You, you need to tell, okay, now I do this, and this is the only way I can, I can move, okay? So now if you put focusing on the, on the swing, on the dance, 
then you're going to have this strong correspondence one-to-one -one again, but you have that one reduction step corresponds exactly to one positive step in the logic. Great. So now, yes, so now you can talk about things in, in the logic and then transform these things into the calculi before you can only go in one direction when you talk about meta level reasoning, okay? And uh, then the, the motto that uh, the processes formula has that will be reach, reachability, I mean, the, the, the properties of reachability as in, in, in the calculus, as entailment in logic has a total different kind of spirit because you can go the other way around as well. So let me just give you one example of how this thing works. So now let's come back to coffee, right? To, to the coffee machine. So um, this is so this is the specification of the coffee machine, the classical uh, coffee machine uh, in CCP. And here is the the proof of the 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 the, 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 the this, um, this reduction here uh, in linear logic in focused linear logic. So every time you, you, you do a tail and a parallel um, uh, um, parallel composition of things, what you're going to do is to store things. Actually, I mean, the, uh, the, as I said, the, all the, the, the constraints in this case, coin and coffee only, they're going to have a bang on the, on the, uh, in front of them. And then uh, bangs, they are stored in the classical context. And every time you have something here, so this is, this is an, an S, so you're going to store this as well. So this is only, you know, doing this, this uh, blue thing here is done via, via this, uh, this asynchronous step here of organizing things. Then you move to, you already told the, the, the coin. Now you're going to move to add uh, the coin then to the coffee. So what you're going to do here is one step of computation is really uh, the synchronous uh, phase or positive phase in, uh, in linear logic, focused linear logic, okay? Okay, then you're going to you're going to rise to 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 a point here where you're going to be focused on something that is uh, there is positive on the left. So you, you're going to switch. So now you 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 arrive to a point where you're going to switch from synchronous to asynchronous uh, phase, and then you do that and you do everything all the storage that you can do. Again, you have a bank coffee here, so you're going to store your coffee, right? So this is basically the coffee machine. And now, and then uh, what's in, in, in yellow there is only now you have to deal with, uh, with constraints, only with constraints. You don't deal anymore with, uh, with uh, processes, only constraints. So now you have the constraint part that uh, um, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's just one, one way of checking that the constraints are, are okay, right? So this way you have one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, processes and, um, and uh, formula in a very strong way. So what happens when you do, when you put focusing into the, the play? It happens something that it's really interesting, at least I, I think so. So imagine that you have this uh, process here that you have one tail and two S. And the first S is going to ask A and then B, and the second one is going to do the other way around, S, B, and then A, okay? And you're going to tell A, a and B, so it doesn't matter, you're going to be able to, to do this, to, to, to move on with uh, both processes. So you have at least three, well, you have three traces if you have only, well, yeah. So you have two, three ways of talking about or seeing this process to, 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 um, to evolve, okay? The first one is, okay, I can, I can, uh, I can al always start with tell. I can always tell things. So I don't uh, even think about this. So this is asynchronous or, or negative part. Then I have to choose, I'm going to ask this one or I'm going to ask this one. As I said, it doesn't matter, but I can ask, for example, I can ask the first, uh, I, can, I, ask, uh, I can start with the first process, the uh, first ask process, and then move on with this until I get okay. Uh, and then I move to the other one, and then I, I'm going to have the other one. Or I can start from the second one uh, until I have okay prime, and then I can move with the, uh, the other process as well. Or I can interleave them, the execu execution of this, okay? So I can ask uh, A uh, of the first process, then ask B of the second, then ask B of the, the first, and then ask A of the second, right? So this is an interleaved kind of um, 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 reduction, okay? 
Right. So now we have a problem because if we have focusing, focusing is not going to to allow you to have this third uh, this third phrase here. Okay. Because once you focus on an ask, then you have another ask inside. Then you're forced to do this ask. So first, so focusing force you forces you to do that. So when we have focusing, then we're not going to have this trace, right? So, but I said it's one to one, yeah. So for having all the traces, you have to put uh, what we call delays. So you have to mark. Uh, so every time you finish something, so you, you do this S, then before starting the other S, you're going to have a delay there that's going to flip the polarity of the formula that is inside. So it's going to flip also the, the phase that you are in. So you're going to put that on hold. So then you can do whatever else you want to do, and then you have interleaving. So uh, you can have, so it's, it's again, it's one to one. You can use focusing. You, you, if you put the lays in front of, uh, of, uh, of processes, then you, have, you still have one to one. But if, the thing, the nice thing is that if you don't want to have interleaving, you don't have to. So as I said to you, focusing is a complete discipline for, for linear logic, right? So as I said, you can come back to CCP. And then when you have uh, the correspondence to focusing in linear logic, it will be uh, maximal derivation in uh, maximal, maximal reduction in CCP. And this is going to be complete in CCP as well. So this is the way that they really translate something from the logic to the calculus. Uh, and this is, I think it's really nice, okay? Right. So um, I told at the beginning that uh, the, the, the main part of the work is, uh, okay, so this is, this is really nice. So you have a very strong way of talking now about calculus and logic. Um, but what I think that's the most interesting feature of all this work is the way that we put multimodality to play along uh, with, uh, with the logic and of course with, uh, with the, con uh, the concurrent calculus. And again, in a one-to-one -one manner, um, well, at least in most cases. So think about the, the, the situation where we still have a coffee machine. Uh, we still have the money, but the coffee machine, you're inside your office, for example, and the coffee machine is outside. So of course, you, you cannot have a coffee, right? Uh, so you, you can translate this into, into CCP in this way. So you have a coin that is inside some space. You have a coffee, a coffee machine that is whatever. And then the only thing you can do is to store um, the coin in the space and do nothing else. You cannot evolve, evolve from this process. You get stuck, okay? So, um, so thinking about this, this, this kind of you know, spaces and uh, to have coins in different places or knowing coins in, from different ages, knowing different coins and this kind of things. Uh, in this work of 2012, Mm, uh, Sonia, uh, Sophia Knight and, and colleagues, um, they started discussing about um, model behaviors in CCP. So um, they started with this, with this, the same, um, mm, the same um, intuition that I, I said uh, before, that every time we put them, some a process inside a little box with an eye, means that uh, the process P is going to run inside a space or agent i okay and then you have the the, the correspondent in the in the store that will be uh with this uh s uh, function here that's going to say that the information c holds for an agent i and this is going to be in the store okay so um you have that if you have at least two kind of behaviors so for example uh, in the epistemic behavior uh, you can really read this as an agent knows something, right? So we're going to, to say that SI of C is I, the agent I knows C. And the thing about the epistemic logic is that when an agent knows something, then this something is true, okay? Uh, you can have an agent know that knows that another agent knows something. Uh, and uh, so you have, um, I would say, method kind of, um, uh, modalities, let's say, right? Uh, and and as, as I said, in the epistemic setting, um, the information that goes outside. So if J knows that I know C, then J knows C, and of course C is true again. Okay. So beliefs are facts. 
And the other thing is that uh, this this is idepondent, idepondent. So if I know that I know C, then I know C. If you go to the special uh, case, then this is not nothing of this is the case anymore. Okay. So you're going now. You're going to read this as C holds in the, in the space I. You can have a space, a side space, but this, the, the 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 you don't have any more that uh, the constraints that they do not um, go outside anymore. Okay, they 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 are going to be um, uh, they they are not going to be propagated. And in particular, you don't prop propagate falsity. So in a systemic, if you have if if an a, uh, one agent uh, knows false, then false is true everywhere okay and the special no i mean if um if uh, one state or one space is um is false and it has false inside then this is not global it's not going to be proper propagated outside um so how do we give uh, the like declarative interpretation of such, such modalities so the idea is to use the modalities as i said of linear logic right so in linear logic, the only thing we have to know about modalities in linear logic is, is this, that uh, it, it, this is the only rule, the only, well, couple of rules that I'm going to put, but we're going only to be interested in, in this one. So modalities in linear logic, so the bend in pessimistic linear logic, for example, has two uh, rules that are interesting per, per se. So the first one is called the elliptic, that bottom up, what we can do is to, um, uh, to take off the bank, okay? Um, and uh, the promotion rule that says that, okay, if I want to prove something classical, uh, then everything has to be classical, right? I can only reason about class classical uh, information, uh, classical um, things if I have classical information, okay? So the promotion rule bottom up means that I can only take off this bank here if uh, all the, the formulas and the context are banks uh, have modalities as well. So uh, what, what happens is that you can uh, reason not only with one explanation, but you can have many of them, right? And these are called sub explanations. So you can have a, uh, you have a way of talking about multimodality in linear logic. And the idea is the same. So you, you um, again, you have the relation is the same. Every time you have a bank, you can move um, bottom up uh, just taking off the bank. Uh, it doesn't matter the, um, the label you have on your uh, explanation. But for the promotion, it's a little bit more difficult uh, in the sense that, okay, before you only had everything to be classical. Now you, you need more, right? You need that not only this, you can only prove something if you have more information in the context then that's something that you want to prove. So you're going to ask that A is less or equal to every single label that you have in the context, in the context okay? Oh, this was done, uh, uh, in principle, this was done for guaranteeing cut elimination of the whole system, but we're going to see other aspects of this in the little while. So the good thing is that now, uh, if you have bank A and bank B and the same formula, bank market with this uh, modalities, then one is not going to prove the other, okay? It doesn't matter. I mean, if they're different, then one is not provable from the other. They're not equivalent anymore. Uh, so you may have as many sub exponentials as you want, and they are going to be really different, uh, different um, modalities, let's say. So now, uh, now we can we can talk about you know coffee and coffee machine and coins being different rooms rooms. So if you have a coffee in a coin in one room and you have the coffee machine in another room, then you're not going to have a coffee, okay? But still, if you have a coin here and a coffee machine doesn't specify where, then you're going to have a coffee, okay? Exactly because you have the relation because of this rule here. But and then. So to avoid this kind of things, I mean, when we talk about space in cost machines and space is not something that I really want to happen. So for for guaranteeing this um, locality or uh, that something is going to be stuck into a, a place, we use the other subject, the other explanation of linear logic that will be question mark. So now if I have then question mark coin, it means that coin is going to be restricted to the space B. Okay, and it doesn't matter if I have a coffee machine, I'm not going to have coffee, uh, uh, it doesn't matter where. Okay, so um, 
this is one thing. So in this way, we can capture space and also knowledge. We're going to talk about this in the in the while. But what we did was also to um, well, it would be nice if we if we could have a coffee machine everywhere, right? And we could reason about this. So if I have a coffee machine everywhere and I have a coin here, I should have a coffee, right? So this is the way we do. So we put we we proposed a way of um, of having quantification over sub explanations or over uh, location or over multimodalities. And in this way, we have a notion of mobility. Okay, so now the coffee machine is moving to, towards uh, places. So now if I have a coin here and everywhere I have a coffee machine, then I have a coffee. And this is uh, interesting as well. And it comes back as well and we have uh, nice features uh, in the um, process uh, side as well. Just to wrap up this, uh, this uh, part and move on with the last part of my talk. Um, uh, this declarative view of mm, flavors in processes are done really parametrically. parametrically. So um, if you want that something is located at some somewhere, you use only the bank. If you want that it, it should be confined there, then you use bank and question mark. And if you use quantification over this location, this sub explanation, then you have notion of uh, mobility. And so you can move the process uh, in locations, okay? And, and this way it, we take, so this, this general idea and we just say, okay, in the epistemic modality, then we're going to have the first one. So it's, you only have located uh, things. So facts are, um, so believe are facts. Uh, so in this way, we can uh, we can talk about um, uh, the, the, the exponentials. We can, we we can think about the exponentials as a sequence of uh, let's say agents, right? And uh, you have that uh, every time you have this, this uh, sequence of the same agent, this is going to collapse to to a. And every time that you have an agent, this is going to be less or equal to an agent inside another agent, let's say. So you can have uh, processes moving outside. So this is the organization that you give for having epistemic uh, CCP, uh, the corresponding logic for epistemic CCP. And this one is a little uh, uh, drawing to talk about common logic with only three uh, with three agents. Okay. So in this, so this is the way we talk about um, epistemic modalities. Special modalities now nothing is related to nothing. So um, uh, you don't have either potency and you, you cannot communicate things. So you have really a discrete kind of um, sub-exponential structure. And with time is really interesting because, you know, you have here time unit times one, two, three, and you have this plus here that means from time on. So from, from this time on, okay, the plus means this. So in this in this in this way we can talk uh, also about um, time uh, time CCP and and while the first two uh, for epistemic and special we have a very strong correspondence again so we can go in back uh, using focusing always itself now in logic linear logic with sub exponentials in the case of time it's not that strong because you have these two kinds of uh, of um, uh, locations right. The, the, the one, two, three, the unit of times that they are linear. So this is, this is strong. You have a strong one-to-one uh, -one correspondence. But when you move to one plus, two plus, then it, it's not going to be one-to-one -one anymore. Although we have very nice um, um, characterizations as well, okay? So that's why I put not that strong, okay? It's not weak, it's not strong, it's in the middle. Okay, so uh, let's go to the last part of the talk. That'll be okay. So I, I'm, I'm talking about structures, right? So um, so far I, I I only have full sets. So um, what about lattices or you know um, something that has a, a richer, let's say, algebraic structure? So this is where I'm going to move now to end the talk. Uh, so we have also analyzed uh, other kind of structures that we can put in the in the linear logic on the top of linear logic and try to see what we can have on the other side of the concurrent system sometimes uh, this thing already uh, was there already as the the ones that i'm going to talk now sometimes it doesn't 
and uh, I'm, and this is not I'm not going to talk about this because it's a little bit too technical um, when you mix things and uh, so we're going to talk about this in this talk. So so um, what what if uh, instead of having a pulse set, I have what's called a complete light lattice monoid. That would be uh, you have a set and uh, and uh, you have a, a pre-order here. Uh, in the sense that this, uh, this is going to be a complete lattice. And you have an operator, a uh, binary operator here, uh, in the sense that when you take, um, uh, when it, yeah, of course, uh, the set is, is, uh, is bounded, so you have a uh, least and greatest, greatest element, element. And then when you take the, the set with uh, this operator, then you're going to have um, a commutative mon monoid, okay? Um, and, 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 and this is uh, distributed. So you have a, a notion of distributed, distributivity. So every time you operate to things, you go down, okay? Um, okay, so if you have this, this uh, structure here as a sub-exponential, then uh, you, you're going to have a very interesting thing that happens. So you can talk about, you can talk about a concurrent processes with this uh, structures uh, on the top. I'm going to talk about this in, in a minute. Uh, but what, ha what happens in the other side on the logic? So let's go to the logical side uh, first. So it's really interesting. So when we, when we talk about promotion in uh, linear logic with sub-exponentials, as I said, the thing is that you, you need to have this information here less or equal the, uh, than all the other information that they had in your context, right? So A should be less or equal to every single other uh, exponential that you have there. And this is an alpha cut elimination. But if you move to a lattice, then being less or equal to everyone means that it's less or equal to the greatest lower bound of everyone, right? So you can change a little bit the thing that you put here, the, the, um, uh, the constraint that you put here in your, in your, um, in your um, rule, uh, the application of your rule. So now A is less or equal than the GLB of the AIs, okay? Great. But now with CLN, what happens is that it's even stronger. A is going to be less or equal to the, we call this the accumulation of all the information. So, so this is really what the, the, the tensor in linear logic is telling us in the beginning, right? I mean, the tensor accumulates things in this way. So you, you, you look, so if this F here, it'll be, uh, for example, the tensor of all this F here. What you're doing here is to accumulate the information you have here to be bigger than the, the information that you have, you want to prove. So this is always the same. The information that you have here is, is going to be smaller or equal than the, the accumulation of information that you have here. And so this is the case also with CLM. And you accumulate, you accum the thing is that you accumulate things in CLM using this, um, the, the monoidal operator of, uh, of the monoid that you have there uh, on the background. So this is really promotion in the setting, okay? And uh, you read this as uh, bank A, uh, you, you read bank A C as um, C is believed with preference A. So, when we move to this kind of structure here in the sub-exponentials, we're talking about preferences. And, uh, and then there is uh, the notion of pre preferences in the uh, uh, constraint programming. So for example, some inst instances here, if I put um, the CLM as, uh, as having a set with only two elements, uh, that'll be uh, public and uh, secure um, information, uh, for example, and you organize, of course, public is less than uh, secure, uh, then, uh, for example, if you want to prove something uh, secured, then you can only have uh, you, you can only uh, you can only do that if you only have secure information or private information. You cannot do that uh, with a focusing if you have only public information. Okay, so this is really focusing and strong adequacy talking uh, here. Okay, you cannot do that without focusing. Actually, I mean you can, but then it's complicated. You have to move things and erase things and blah, blah. When you do like this, you force that this, this is not going to be possible and that's it. Okay, um, but we can, we can have different uh, instances of uh, CLM. So for example, I can have here, I can have uh, the interval zero one 
and I can relate them using less or equal in the real. Um, uh, I mean, the order is less or equal, and then I can compare them or accumulate the, them using the minimal of them. Then I'm going to talk about fuzziness or fuzzy information. Uh, and so in this way, for example, we can prove um, using focusing or not in this case, but you know, we use focusing to prove this kind of thing here. I just, it just doesn't need um, that. For example, if I want to prove C and D, uh, uh, and, and I have this with a preference A, uh, it, it, this is believed with a preference A, then, uh, and I have C and I have D with some belief uh, here, 0 0.2 and 0 0.1, then uh, this A here has to be less or equal to the minimal of them, in this case, 0 0.2. So, uh, um, so th in this way, I, I have a very nice way in the logic to talk about, you know, preferences in the, um, in the uh, concurrent, concurrent um, system. Oh, but we can, instead of having minimal here, and this is either pointed, by the way, we can have uh, times that'll be really the multiplication that we have in the real, then we talk about probability. So now if I want to prove uh, C uh, and D with probability A, uh, and I have the C believed with probability 0 0.2 and D with probability 0 0.7, then the way of combining this information, multiplying them, so I know that uh, uh, A is going to be less, should be as less or equal to 0 0.14, okay? So this is uh, nice. I mean, the only thing, so we never change the, the rule that we have here. The rule is the same. We only change the, the organization that we have in the sub-exponential um, being a, a complete lattice monoid, okay? So this, uh, to, to finish the talk, the talk is, uh, this is the big picture. So uh, what we've done in all this work, um, I didn't show everything, but you know the, the, the things that I think that are easier to explain and, um, and um, they give the, the better picture, let's say, of what's really happening is that when we use linear logic uh, and, and focusing, we, we have a, a very nice way of talking about a concurrency on the other side. So we go on the other side. If we put together uh, sub-exponentials or multimodalities, then we, talk, we can talk about flavors, of course, always using, uh, using the notion of focusing. And when we put quantifiers over the sub-exponentials or these locations or these multimodalities, then we can talk about you know, mobility as well, okay? And this is done in a very neat way. It's really one-to-one, -one. the adequacy, adequacy results we have, we have is really, really um, strong. So in, the, in this way, we can, we can have um, proof systems from one side. We can have proof systems for linear CCP, epistemic CCP, spatial CCP, time CCP. But we can go in the other way around. And we, have, we can propose from the logic to the, the calculus, we can propose new CCP models. For, so for example, for distributed CCP using quantifiers. So I didn't talk about this linear CCP. Uh, linear special CCP, so this is new, uh, sub-constraints, dynamic shared space, something else that I didn't talk about. Great, so what's next? So um, uh, I'll just finish talking about two lines of research that we are pursuing, pursuing right now. Uh, one, is, so it, this is really ongoing work, uh, what I'm going to talk now. Well, the first one is, um, to really understand a little bit better the algebraic structure of promotion. So as I said, if you change the, the, the way that you accumulate things, then you, the, the rule is the same, but if you, if you change on the structure, the way you accumulate information, then you're going to change this uh, restriction that you put here. Um, so, this, so we did this for complete uh, uh, order monoids, but uh, what other structures, interesting structures than that, for example, if, in, if it is not, you know, if it is not uh, um, or commutative, for example, right, or non-associative, so it's not, if it is not really a monoid, um, what can you tell about this? And, and uh, when you do that, what kind of conference um, behaviors you have on the other side? Okay, so this is one uh, line of research that we're, we started thinking right now. And the other one is, something else. So take a look at the modalities themselves or the multimodalities themselves. 
when we talk about sub exponentials, uh, all we can talk about is that how they organize in algebraic structures and uh, if they allow or not with and contraction. And that's it. Okay. Uh, but with uh, Bjorn, uh, we did something else. So we also studied things like uh, what if it, it doesn't have the relation, for example, or it doesn't have the I the potency of banks, so that would be transitivity, for example. And if it doesn't have seriality, that would be the bang implies question mark, for example. So if you, you may or not have these features as well, other than weakening contraction, and on the top of this, you can organize them in different algebraic structures. So what happens then? We do know what happens in the logic, but we do not know how to translate this to some computational, to have some interpretational computational out of it. And this is something that we are investigating right now. Uh, and the other thing is that, okay, and if, if we go, we, we want to go really lower and talk about non-normal uh, modalities. So, so for example, you could have bang I A being read as the agent I can bring about the resource A. And then we can talk about open systems, for example, and have new declarative views for, for them. So this is these are things that we've been thinking uh, lately. And uh, I would like to thank you so much for the attention uh, so far. And I'm open to questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elaine, for this very interesting talk. Uh, so you can ask questions on the chat or you can raise your hand and you will be unmuted. Maybe I can start with one question, um, attending for, for other questions. So at, at one point you mentioned the possibility to consider idempotent or non-idempotent uh, operators for your structure. So I was wondering if, if in the case of non-idempotency, you can extract interesting uh, quantitative properties from the from the language uh, as is done in functional programming for example well yes yeah, so so um, I think this is uh, this is uh, well studied so for example when you talk about linear uh, light linear logics or soft linear logic so there is a correspondence between uh, this the systems and um, and uh, um, polyon polynom poly time or uh, polynomial um, functions, right? Uh, so yes. Yeah. So, so so the thing is, um, the thing is that we we we're not going to change the system to another system. So I'm not going to move to light linear logic. So it's the same logic. The only thing is that you change the way you see the 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 the, 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 the sub exponentials, right? And uh, and, and then uh, it's it's a little bit different. So we expect to have something like in the in, in the in the in the lines that had, the work that had been done uh, a lot, but we still we still quite don't know how this because it has multimodalities on the play as well. So it's not that simple as having only one bank as in light linear logic or or soft linear logic, for example, that you change the election promotion and blah, blah, for simpler things. And then you have the characterization. But, you know, as this is done in proofs that, um, in, um, um, sorry, in, uh, in types of, types of formulas kind of setting as well, right? Here, yeah, I move it to, to, to process as formula. So it's a little bit different as well. So we don't know. So this is all things that I think they are fascinating. We've been thinking about them, but we don't have answers yet. So um, that's really why I started to talk about this because you know part of this work we've been doing since 2013. So this is uh, like old stuff, but they are going to they're they're mixing with new stuff that we've been thinking now, and we don't have answers yet. So we got, there's a lot of things to think about. Okay. Okay. Um, other comments or questions? Otherwise, I, I will add one. 
one, one more question in this case. So uh, you relate logic and, and uh, concurrent languages. So it is natural to ask whether you can change the concurrent language or enrich your logic. What can you comment about that? Yeah, so, so this, is the, this is also interesting. So um, we've done some work as well that, um, so as I said, CCP has this nice way of talking about um, recursion, right? So for example, you can, instead of, the way we do that uh, right now is to, we, we put theories under in, the, in, in uh, on linear logic in the same way that Dale did in his, in his paper in 93, where he started all this discussion. Uh, but one way of doing that would be to exactly instead of having this having um, fixed uh, point operators in the logic. So we've done that as well. So we have linear logic with uh, sub exponentials and fixed um, fixed point operators, and then we can talk about CTL and this kind of stuff as well. Um, uh, yeah. So so this is one thing that we can do, for example. Um, one could think about what about bunched logics or other kind of sub-exponential sub kind of sub-structure kind of logics on the other side. And this is really an interesting thing that I didn't think yet. Uh, on, on the other side of the, the calculus that we've been studying, so there's a very nice uh, already done work on CTS and and Dale did a very, was the, the beginning was with Dale and Pi calculus and um, we, of course, we can revisit some of the things that had have been done in the past and see things with with the focus kind of view because non, non, neither of them use focus. Um, as far as I know, we are the only ones so far. I'm not sure of that. I may be wrong. Um, yeah, so that would be interesting as well to to go back and see what you know other calculi that people used in the past and without using focusing and how focusing if. Uh, can uh, can uh, give some um, a better way of talking about this other process calculi uh, or a new ones or I don't know. Okay, thanks. If there is no other question or remark, I think that we can close this session. Thanks a lot, Elaine. <laughs> and uh, so we have a coffee break, I think, now for half an hour. And of 